Hello and welcome to another one of our algorithmic trading school videos. Um, so these videos are for the C Trader trading platform and we're going to show you how to create technical indicators and automated trading systems using Microsoft C Sharp. Um, so if you're just watching this video for the first time, just quickly watch what I'm going to show you now because it'll explain more in more detail about this course. Um, if you're already following our courses, you can skip this section and go straight to the coding section. So if you're not familiar with who we are, we are a company that provides trading tools, a coding service, an online education for the C-Trader trading platform. You can find us at clickalgo.com. If you just type that into Google, you'll find us. Um, this is the C-Trader platform. It was created by a company called Spotware. You can find out more information about them by going to spotware.com. And um, our algorithmic trading course can be found if you come to our website under education. Um, here you'll find various different courses to help you get started in writing your own code to create technical indicators and trading robots. Um, we also have a YouTube channel. You can come and visit us. And on the YouTube channel, we've got various videos to help you um, with this type of course, the algorithmic course. But we've also got videos to help you learn how to use the C Trader platform and our user guides for our products. Um, we've also got a support forum to help um, our students if they're stuck with any coding questions. And you can find that at ctrader.info. And in here, you'll be able to find different examples of coding and various things to help you out. So um, the other thing we've got is on the um, ctrader.info website. Before you start any of these courses, you need to actually um, look at our requirements. Now, the requirements you need to follow are our coding standards. Um, there's a basic CBOT walkthrough, an indicator walkthrough. What is CTrader Automate? Um, how to install Microsoft Visual Studio, which is part of this course, and how to download and install um, CTrader. So before you start any of our courses, we highly recommend that you actually um, do the requirements first. And then from the requirements, you can actually get started with the course. Now, there's a quick disclaimer about um, about this course that we're doing. Okay, so that's it. So now we can actually start the coding uh, video now to show you how to do various tasks regarding our course. Hi there, welcome to the next video as part of our uh, algorithmic trading course. Um, so today's video, I'm going to cover how to actually um, create an instance of an existing C Trader indicator in code. So how to reference a C Trader indicator and plot the values to a chart. Now, we've covered two other courses previously, which is the course can content, which is lesson one. And lesson two, we define parameter settings. Um, you can find the course details, just go into our algo school um, on the forum. So if I just go there, go to algo school and beginner. And this one we're doing is coding telegram signals. Okay, so this is the third video. So in the third video, I'm going to show you now um, quite briefly, actually, it's quite easy to do how to reference an existing C Trader indicator. So, in the previous video, we covered parameter settings. So, these are all your parameters here. And the video now, I'm going to show you how to plot the um, indicator to a chart. So, I'm going to go back to the code. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is define a public variable, um, which is the relative strength index object, which is the indicator that's built into C Trader. Now, to do this, I just pretty much just type in. Um, I'm going to declare it as public actually, it just means it's public that it can be accessed anywhere. Start typing in relative strength index and it comes up automatically. Now, this is one of the inbuilt indicators into C Trader. Um, it's got various different types, it does a RSI welder and a momentum oscillator. Um, so, if you're not familiar with a relative strength index indicator, you can just Google it, find out more. Now, I'm going to call this indicator RSI and I'm going to do a get and set. Now, get and set, if you remember in the previous video, it just allows you to actually get the value from this object or set a value to it. In our case, we're going to, in the initialize method, um, which gets called only once when the indicator starts, we're going to construct the indicator. In the on calculate method, which gets called um, quite often every time the value changes of the asset and on bar close, we're going to call this method of uh, code to actually set the indicator value to plot it to the chart. So the first thing I'm going to do here at the top is just declare the indicator. That's all I've done. I've just declared this object called RSI is a relative strength index object. Okay, that's it. That's all I've done. Now what I'm going to do, just remove this code here. In the um, initialize method, as I mentioned previously in the previous videos, this method or the code as it gets executed will go inside here only once when the indicator starts. It will also execute that code anytime a setting changes. So anytime you go to your parameters and you change one of these parameters, it will reload the indicator. Okay. And it will recall the initialize method. 
So what we're going to do now in the initialize method is construct the RSI index indicator. So the RSI uh, indicator. So I'm just now going to say RSI, which is our object. Now putting the equal sign means I'm going to assign it. I'm going to do the set. It's the same as saying set. I'm going to set this object RSI to be the object. So we're going to actually um, construct it now. Now the indicators um, assess, um, object has access, if I do a dot, has access to all of the CTrader inbuilt indicators. So you've got various indicators here that you can access. We only want the relative strength index one. So I type in relative strength index, and now we need to set the parameter. So now we're constructing or creating this indicator. It needs a data source. So if you remember in the previous video, if I go to the parameter settings, we had indicator data here. So the source of the data for the indicator, we're going to choose the prices, either the open, high, low, or close. So pretty much the same as a candle's indicator prices, open, high, low, or close. And once you select that, you select the period for the indicator. So how many bars back? I'll go back to the code. So now this is the code where we set our parameter for source. And this is the variable that we defined as a data series. So here I just type source. And the next value is the periods, the indicated data periods. And we defined it up here as period. I'm just going to copy that and paste it here. Close parentheses, comma, and that's it. So this line of code constructs our indicator with a data source, which is the source that we've defined, whether you choose open, close, high, or low, and the period. In this case, actually, it's called data series. Okay. Once you've done now that, that we now have the object. Now, in the onCalculate method, which gets called very often, we want to actually plot this to the chart. We want to plot the indicator to the chart. So the result, if you remember from the parameters, was this value here, whether you choose the color of the line, um, the type of line, and the thickness of the line. Okay, This is the line that gets displayed. So this is your indicator data series object. Okay, Now, this is going to be used to actually plot um, the line to the chart. So we've got some default values here that we defined previously, the line thickness and the color. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to say, OK, this object that gets displayed to the chart, I want to assign it values. I want, I want values to be pumped into it from the relative strength index indicator. So to do that, we've already defined the variable, which is public, which means I can access it anywhere, of RSI. So I type RSI dot. Now we get the result, OK? And then from the result, we just want to use brackets and we want to put the index value, the same index value that's coming in. By doing it this way, this means it, dot, it, it prints a dot on the screen for each uh, time the calculates called or each index and it slowly draws the chart as it goes across the screen. So I'm going to build this and go to the line. Now what happens is you can see it's plotting the line for each index value that comes in. It plots the line and it eventually draws a line like this. Now. This indicator right now has 70, 50, and 30 as levels. Um, and the reason for that is that you can define these levels at the top here. So if you, for example, wanted any custom levels, I'm just going to copy and paste this from previous block of code. You can specify uh, custom levels. So I might want 20 and 80 with a mid one of 50. Now, if I build this, anytime you change any of these attributes here, you need to remove the CBOT instance and add it back in. Let me just build that and add it back in. Because if you don't, it won't redraw the lines. Now, the reason it's gone off the chart for the 70 and 30 or 20, because it's too far off the chart. So I go back. Now, if I change this to 30 and 70 again and rebuild, if I click on it, you don't see the changes. I need to remove the CBOT instance. Then I need to add the CBOT instance again, and the values will come up on the chart. And you can't quite see the one above because it's gone above 70. You can just see them there. To actually see it, I have to actually expand this higher. You can see the 70 and 30. I'm going to change the template to dark um, so you can see it better. And I'm going to change the values for the um, in here to be 40 and 60. I just thought I'd go over this a little, little bit more detail just to show you that, you know, you might have the same hiccup that if you click here, you might not see the reflection there. You have to remove the instance and add the instance again. Don't forget to build it. And you can see the new values have come up there. OK, that's that. So the next thing I'm going to show you is um, some of the actual 
um, other values that you can put on there. Now, if you ever wanted to actually display um, the, the actual indicator on the chart and not in the bottom panel, you can put another parameter here. If I do comma, I do is overlay. We won't need it for this project because we want it to be at the bottom. Do it again, is overlay equals true. I've tested this. If I was to build this, remove the instance, add a new instance, um, it's plotted it on the actual chart, which you don't really want. Okay, we want it at the bottom. So I have to go back in. So you do is overlay equals false. So if you were doing an indicator, a custom indicator that you want to plot it onto the chart, you would just change these values. There's various other values you can use uh, to put in there. Later on, I'm going to show you the access rights. Um, you've got a few access rights, which is full access or none. We've got it none for now. To actually be able to send a telegram alert, you'll have to change that full access rights to full access. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually um, build this again. Um, I'd have to remove this CBOT instance and then re-add it and you'll see that it's now done at the bottom. So that's all I wanted to show you. But again, you know, you could change the color here. Actually, I can do that while I'm here. I can have that as black. If I change the template again to a black background template, again, you can change the color to white and you can change the line type and the actual thickness. Okay, so you've got options of adjusting the indicator settings there. And this is all done through this output uh, attribute you've got here, which is the indicator data series. And um, what I'm going to briefly do is just go through um, what I've just covered now, just in case um, it was, I went a bit too fast or anything. Um, but I'll do it as simple as possible. So this block of code here is your output value to plot the indicator data series to the chart. The variable name is result, is result. Okay, it plots a line, lime green, a thickness of two. Now, this block of line, sorry, this line of code here is a public value that you can access in these two methods, that one or that one. And it actually um, starts by defining that the object, uh, variable name RSI is going to be a relative strength index indicator object. In the initialize method, which is only called when the indicator first starts, or if you actually change any of these settings, so the parameters here, if you change any of these, um, the indicator will reload and run this block of code again. Now what we do is construct um, a relative strength index indicator, assign it to the RSI variable to say that this RSI variable is now a relative strength index indicator. Um, the source that we've selected, so if I go here, the source can be open, high, low, or close values, price values of the um, indicator, sorry, of the candle or the asset that you're using. The period that you want to use, so how many bars back. Um, and it's actually going to use these parameters that you've got as your parameter settings to build a custom version of the relative strength index. Then each time there's a, a price change or each time the candle closes, it will actually assign the value that's been calculated from the relative strength index. So each index, sorry, each indicator that comes from CTrader, um, it'll have its own inbuilt formula inside that object. You know, so a relative strength index will have its own formula. You can Google to find out more information about this. So the values that have been calculated in all of this, it will go into the RSI object. Now the RSI object, we say the result value of that and the index value. So the index value can be each one of these bars, candles, closes could be a new index as it goes along. And it'll actually assign it to the result, which is the output that gets plotted to the chart. So that's, it's a very simple definition of how to do that. If you wanted to do it with different indicators, all you do is you change the name of this. So I could call this um, an example. Um, I could call it a whole moving average indicator, and I could call this HMA. Okay, and in here I would call this HMA indicators dot whole moving average. And in the whole moving average indicator, you've got the same parameters. Sometimes you might have different parameters, but you have the same. Now, if I was then to do HMA dot result dot index, if I was to build this, this is now actually going to plot a whole moving average indicator to the chart. And it's a different, you can actually see it's a different um, line being plotted. Now, so the idea behind this is, when we go further into the course, um, that when we do the telegram alerts, to send telegram alerts, I want to show you how you can actually reference any type of the indicator 
uh, indicates that standard with CTrader and how to send an automated telegram alert when that indicator touches a certain value. So with the RSI, we had upper and lower values. So in the RSI, um, whether it's overbought or oversold, that's what it's used for. If an asset has been overbought, then you might want to um, do a signal to say sell. If an asset is oversold, you might have a signal to say buy. So that's it. That's the, what I'm going to cover now. In the next video, I'm going to cover how to use Telegram alerts, how to actually integrate the Telegram um, libraries into this project so you can send Telegram alerts. Okay, that's it. If you like the video, please give me a thumbs up because that really helps us with pushing our videos higher in the algorithm for Google. And it also allows us to create more free videos for you. So a thumbs up would really help us out. Thank you very much.